if I can somehow like guarantee that I'll never feel this way again, I felt like I would, you know, definitely take it. And so I did get the vaccine. As more families travel this summer and as families send their children to summer camps, health officials here at the CDC are trying to send the message to parents that if your child is eligible for a vaccine, that you should get that child vaccinated. To make their point clearly and underline the need for more teenagers to get vaccinated, health officials at the CDC this morning are releasing a new report on children who get sick with the coronavirus. And the CDC director is already calling the new information troubling. The scientists are warning parents this morning that in the month leading up to the Pfizer vaccine's authorization for use with children 12 and up, the CDC observed troubling data about adolescents who got sick with COVID-19 and had to be hospitalized. More concerning were the number of adolescents admitted to the hospital who required treatment in the intensive care unit with mechanical ventilation. Their concerns are that a significant number of teenagers who get sick enough to be hospitalized are ending up in the ICU. In Ohio, 17-year-old Zoe Vincent, who just won her state's vaccine scholarship contest, says her battle with COVID was rough, and she's now glad she got the shot. I feel like it was honestly the most sick I've ever been. The numbers show that about one in three children hospitalized with COVID-19 will end up in the ICU. And of the children who have developed severe illness from COVID-19, most have had underlying medical conditions. So far, health officials say only about 25% of teenagers 12 to 17 years old have gotten one dose of the Pfizer vaccine, and just 9% are fully vaccinated. Another week coming to an end with no deal yet on President Biden's infrastructure plan. But the White House still appears keen on a bipartisan deal, making major concessions to keep Republicans on board. The president shaving $1.3 trillion off his original $2.3 trillion package and dropping his original proposal to pay for the plan by raising corporate taxes. Based on their bottom lines, uh, many of the Republican negotiators should be able to agree. The president's plan includes money for roads, bridges, water facilities, and non-traditional infrastructure like the caregiving economy. But the biggest roadblock in the negotiations appears to be the president's new push to close gaps in the tax law. Let me just give you a simple fact. Last year, for example, 55 of our largest corporations in America paid zero dollars in federal tax. Zero. Biden's latest proposal would force corporations to pay at least 15 percent. Well, I don't think that's going to appeal to members of my party. The president also facing opposition within his own party. Progressive Congressman Jamal Bowman tweeting, quote, two trillion dollars was already the compromise. POTUS can't expect us to vote for an infrastructure deal dictated by the Republican Party.